In the last few weeks, InfoSemantics has released a new product, CPMate. This is a plugin for Adobe Animate that allows HTML5 animations published from Adobe Animate to work in closer union with Adobe Captivate. However, if you already looked at the CPMate product page, you may have noticed that one of the features mentioned there has nothing to do with HTML5 animations. What is it? Well, if on the CPMate product page, we scroll down to this workflow subheading, you'll see that we have this feature discussed, load JavaScript libraries into Captivate. Now this could be third party libraries such as Sweet Alert, which is very popular, or libraries of your own creation, your own custom JavaScript code. Now, if you've ever tried to use JavaScript inside of Adobe Captivate, you might find this quite a thrilling feature to hear about because as it stands at the moment in November 2020, there is no way to load JavaScript files into Adobe Captivate. There are a couple of hacks, such as the way that CP Extra is loaded into Adobe Captivate, but there's no easy way to update JavaScript files and have different JavaScript running in different projects which is quite frustrating. However, with CPMate, we now have a decent way of getting JavaScript code into Adobe Captivate. So how do we do it? Well, let's have a look. Let me introduce you to my setup first. I have a Adobe Captivate file with two slides. It's just one slide here with some text on it and another slide with a button that we will use later. And I have an Adobe Animate file, which already has CPMate set up here. And if you don't know how to use CPMate, please check out the CPMate Quick Start course from our website, where we go into how to set up Adobe Captivate and Adobe Animate to work with CPMate. So how can we load JavaScript code from a JavaScript file into Adobe Captivate? Well, if we go back to the CPMate product page, and under the load JavaScript libraries into Captivate feature, we click on this learn how button, it will take us to part of the CPMate help. This is actually the JavaScript API subsection of the CPMate help. From here, it gives us a couple of examples of loading code into Captivate. Let's copy the most basic example we have here and put it into a JavaScript file and see if we can load this into Captivate. Well, I'm going to jump over to my file explorer here. I already have a JavaScript file set up. I'm going to edit it with the best code editing tool, Notepad. That was a joke. Okay, let's have a look at this code. What's it doing? Well, this part of the code is not being run in Captivate. It's being run in Animate. What's it doing? Well, first of all, it's referring to this X variable. Anything under this capital X is referring to CPMate. It's the namespace where we can find all of CPMate's functions, objects, variables, etc. A lot of these allow us to interact with Captivate, such as this run in Captivate window function here. This allows us to pass in a string of code. This code here inside this string is going to be run in the Adobe Captivate window. So in this case, it's going to send up an alert box telling us that our Captivate code is running. Let's just save this file. And we need to import this JavaScript file first into Adobe Animate. How can we do that? Well, let's go back to Animate. We're in the Actions panel under the global include subsection. And just like how I loaded the CPMate JavaScript file, I'm going to load my custom code JavaScript file. I will go to plus, add a file, and I will browse to my custom code location. Open it and bring it into Adobe Animate. And that's pretty much everything we need to do, except for, of course, publish from Adobe Animate. Now, when publishing from Adobe Animate, we should first always go over here to the JavaScript forward slash HTML section 
and then the HTML forward slash JS tab and make sure this hosted libraries option is turned off. If it's turned on, it causes all sorts of headaches. So we don't want that. Then we'll jump over to the OAM package. Yep, everything's looking good for my export and I will publish this. Didn't take long. Now let's import this file into Adobe Captivate. We will go to the media, HTML5 animation option, and browse to the location of this OAM file that I just exported, which is this one. Okay, so you can see this is now imported into Adobe Captivate. The question is, will this code be run in the Captivate window? Well, let's have a look. We'll go preview project. And let's play our export. Okay, there we go. We have an Adobe Captivate styled alert telling us that our Captivate code is running. Now, what if we wanted to make a change to our code? Well, that's very easy to do. Let's go back to our JavaScript file. Let's change the message that comes up in this alert box to hello world. Save the file, jump back to Adobe Animate. And all we need to do is export a new OAM file. Now, due to the peculiar way that Captivate loads web objects or HTML5 animations, we need to give each OAM package a unique name. So I just put a dash and then I'll start alternating through different letters of the alphabet. But if it's got a unique name such as this, the OAM file will successfully update. If we go to its instance in the Adobe Captivate library, go to properties and then import and import the file that we just exported. Okay, the item has been updated. Let's preview the project again. Okay, and play it. There we go, we have updated our JavaScript file. So already we have a way of loading JavaScript code into Adobe Captivate, which is better than most of the other hacks of loading JavaScript code into Adobe Captivate because we can easily update our code and see it working. Now, there are a couple of drawbacks to this method. For example, if we're back here in Adobe Captivate, let's say that this is a self-placed learning project. This means that the learner might come to the Adobe Captivate file and they will start from slide two. That means that this web object has not been run, which means our code has not been run. The way to get around this is by going to our properties, sorry, our timing tab, and setting this to run for rest of project. However, this also comes with the difficulty that although technically our web object is going to appear on every slide and I might like put it up over on the side here, make it really small and not obvious so that it doesn't take up any visual distraction in our final course. If I go from here to publish the next three slides, or five slides in this case, you will see that our code did not run. That's because even though it is set to display for rest of project on this slide one, if slide one is not included in our export, then neither is this web object. So that means when we test it every time we need to use this preview project option. Now, if you want to rapidly jump to the middle of your course, rather than having to navigate through your maybe 100 slide project, look into the CP extra preference variable xpref start slide as a way of jumping into the middle of your project easily while loading all of the slides and all of your code such as we have seen here. Now, if you are a JavaScript coder, you will know that this, what we've written here is not really a great way to write JavaScript code. If I wanted to write out a couple thousand lines of JavaScript code, I don't want to be doing it inside of a string like this. So there are better ways of doing this. For example, what I can do is I can create a function. I'll call it something like my code. It won't have any parameters or anything, but what I will do is I will write in here the code that I want to run in Captivate. Then over inside of my X 
run and captivate window function, I will type out my code dot to string. Open and close parentheses. So now I can write code in here as many lines as I want. And then this line here is going to convert it to a string for me. Let's test this to see how it works. Once again, updating is very simple. Save our JavaScript file, go back to Adobe Animate. We will just export a new OAM package, give it a unique name. We'll put a B on the end of the name this time, publish, go back to Captivate, go to the library, find the web object, right click, properties, import, browse to the location, open, it's updated, and now let's preview our project again. Okay, we have a published preview, let's have a look at it. Ta-da, we are running code inside of Captivate from inside a function. So you can use any JavaScript IDE that you want to be able to write pretty color-coded code inside of a function, and we'll just convert that function to a string to run inside of Adobe Captivate. Now, one thing to be aware of is that if you are actually using CPMate to run animations inside of your Captivate project, and to show this, I'm just going to set this to display for rest of slide, it's possible that you will have multiple instances of your web object at different slides. Now, this can cause a little bit of a pro problem because if we preview our project again and run the export, if we're quick about things and we say OK to this alert, you'll notice that when we get to the next slide, it runs the alert again. It's running this code twice because there are two instances of this web object here. Now, this may or may not be what you want to happen. For me, it's not what I want to happen. I would ideally just want my code to run once and then never again. Otherwise, there may be conflicts that occur. So we can actually avoid this problem if we go back to our JavaScript code. This run in Captivate window function comes with two parameters. The first one is a string of code that we want to run. But the second parameter is an ID. This is a unique identifier for this block of code that we want to run. So let me give it the name, let's say greeting, because we're sending up an alert. What will happen is when we get into Adobe Captivate here, we'll get to our first slide, it will run the code, and it will take a note. Okay, we just ran some code that was attached to this ID, greeting. And then when it gets to the next slide, and it runs it again, it'll say, hang on, before I run this code, I'm going to check to see whether we've already run some code attached to this ID. It will check, we have, and then it says, okay, this is duplicated code, we're not going to run it again. So just to show that that's how it works, let's go through the process again. As you can see, you would end up publishing a lot of OAMs during your day. Okay. Updating once more. Okay, if this is working as expected, what we should see is that when we publish and run the first slide, we'll get an alert, but that alert will not appear when we get to the second slide. There we go, even though there is another instance of this web object. So if your goal is to write your own personal JavaScript behavior to be used inside of Adobe Captivate, this is pretty much all you need to know. But what if you wanted to take an existing JavaScript library and load it into Adobe Captivate? For example, a very popular choice is Suite Alert. Well, let's go and have a look at the Suite Alert page first. What I will do is go here. This is the Suite Alert made page, and we can see we've got some examples of, oh, that's a nice and alert message, certainly a lot better than what we're seeing inside of Captivate. Well, first of all, what we need to do is we need to get the sweet alert code. To do that, you usually have to go over here to GitHub. Now, these days, it can be a little bit difficult to find the JavaScript code because a lot of people are using Node to be able to create, compile their code, which means you never actually see the JavaScript code yourself. But Sweet Alert is one of these places that allows us to find our JavaScript code. What I'll do from this 
GitHub page for Sweet Alert is I will click on this JS Deliverer CDN. And this is going to point us to a particular file here, this Sweet Alert 2 or min.js. I will click on that. And then this is all the JavaScript code needed to run Sweet Alert. So I will just click somewhere in the page. I will press Control A or Command A on the Mac, and I will copy this code. Then I'm going to go back to my custom code here, and I will paste this into the My Code section. Actually, I'll just change my ID here to be a little more descriptive. Okay, and then let's paste the code in here. Okay, so that's a lot more code than we had in there before. But anyway, what I'll do is I'll save this. Let's go back to animate. Now, as something I should just mention, you could have just any number of JavaScript files loaded in here to be able to send over to Captivate. We're just using one for the sake of simplicity in this video, but don't feel that you are limited to just one. Okay, once again, you know the drill. Publish. Go to Captivate. Properties. Import. Load. Okay. So to see whether this is working, I'm going to jump over here to my button. And I am going to get it to run an alert. So let's just go back over to the sweet alert site. Okay, and there should be some examples down here. Yep. So let's try this example. We'll copy this code and we'll paste it into our JavaScript window inside of Captivate. Okay, let's preview project. and play again. And if everything is working correctly, when we get over to this slide and click this button, we should see a sweet alert appear. There we go. We have just loaded a custom JavaScript library into Adobe Captivate using CPMate. So if you are a budding Adobe Captivate JavaScript developer, then this should be very exciting for you. It's certainly very exciting for me to finally have a decent way of loading JavaScript code into Adobe Captivate. Now, if you are familiar with creating workflows with JavaScript tools such as Node or Gulp, then you could create a way of getting multiple JavaScript files, putting them together, and then just surrounding them, all those files contents with a function at the start, and then a function at the end, and then something that puts it into uh, Captivate with the running Captivate window. You can now create and run any complexity of code inside of Adobe Captivate. So I hope you found that interesting and that you will give it a go. And maybe it will allow you to do more inside of Adobe Captivate because that's always our goal here at InfoSemantics to allow you to push the boundaries of what is possible in Captivate. And that is definitely possible here. So until the next time when we look at another feature of CPMate, We'll see you then.